community in, in Dubai. Uh, let's get you then uh, some of the numbers uh, coming out uh, from Aramex. The UK and Europe are waiting through Brexit. And the US has a new president determined to make a lot of inroads in his mark at home and abroad. So uh, how are consumers reacting to all of this, especially here in this part of the world? Aramex is one of the region's biggest logistics services and has seen a record fourth quarter. CEO Hussein Hashim uh, is with us here on the set. Uh, Hussein, thank you very much for joining us exclusively on Bloomberg Television. Thank uh, you these, these numbers, uh, net profit up 129%, uh, fourth quarter 2016 revenues increasing by 18%. This has been a strong year for Aramex and this is despite the headwinds from a region that is slowing down economically. How were you able to weather that? Is it the diversification that you've been aggressively pushing? Look, uh, 2016 has, has been a very busy year for us. Uh, Q2 and, and Q3, we've seen a slowdown, but then Q4 gave us um, a, a, great, a great advantage in terms of where, uh, where we want to position ourselves. We've been investing heavily in our last mile operations. We've been automating our hubs. Look, it, it's not about having the business now these days. It's about capacity. So you're, you're talking about an offline calendar and online calendar. The online calendar had been impacted by Q2 and Q3 because of the long holidays, specifically in the region. However, in, in, in Q4, we've seen a surge in, in consumer ordering. Uh, uh, online merchandise within, within, within the GCC. On top of that, you've seen um, a, a surge of business across Asia. I mean, we've, we, lots of things have happened for yeah. us. We, we did a, a fast way acquisition in, yeah, in, that's, in that, Australia that's and New Zealand. Yeah, that's key, isn't it? Yeah, before we get into the fast way acquisition, this is a chart that I would like our clients to pull up on the Bloomberg. It tells a little bit the Aramex story, GBTV1127. What we've done here, your line in blue, that's your uh, Dubai index, your benchmark Dubai index. Line in white, that's your Aramex index. So this is a one, on a one-year basis, normalized on 100. You can see you would have almost doubled doubled your money in comparison to the benchmark if you have put your money to work in Aramex. The, the fast way acquisition, are we going to see more of that? Are you going to try to accelerate your diversification? And perhaps are, more acquisitions on the are, agenda. We aspire to become a tech company. We're investing a lot in technology. We've launched our mobile app, our consumer app. Our ERP is already up and, and, and running. Uh, uh, big data is, is part of who we are. We are in the business of moving boxes, but you know what? We are in the business of moving information. So if you order something from Aramex right now, uh, any box coming cross-border e-commerce or domestic, we, we analyze you. We, we profile you as Yusuf. I know everything about you. Okay. <laughs> I will know your habitual buying. I know what time you expect that package to come. And we process that information information to go to predictive operations. So that's, that's putting us like at a better position of, of our competitors right now. Yeah. And uh, Hussein, thank you still for sticking around with us. Hussein Hashim, this is, of course. And uh, well, uh, we've got patches of a slowdown in very many parts of the GCC. Now, are you expecting a comeback soon? When did things start returning to normal? Uh, we've seen a, a more, a better consumer confidence within the region, and, and this obviously happened in Q4. Look, I'm, I'm very confident about Q17 moving forward, but again, I mean, let's, let's be realistic here. You're going to have a, probably a tough Q2 and Q3 because of Ramadan, summer holidays, and, and, and the vacations that comes with it. So I expect a good Q1, a very good Q4. Probably we're going to see, similar to 2016, a bit of slowdown in, in Q2 and, and Q3. However, our business model is designed and is resilient to face such, such challenges. Uh, we've, we've invested a lot in our variable model of last mile. Uh, we're committing 40% of our capacity will be variable through crowdsourcing and outsourcing and paper package. All these initiatives across, across Aramis globally will allow us uh, to have a, 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 a most efficient, uh, a cost, cost efficient uh, business model that will allow us to compete and, and, and satisfy our customer base. Well, tell me something, does that efficient, efficient model, business model, mean more diversification? If so, I mean, you have been quite active in uh, taking several stakes in several companies last year. Does that continue? And if so, do you make something which might change the game a little bit more in 2017? We will continue to pursue our acquisitions. However, the major, uh, the major concentration will be in, in technology. Uh, we, the economy is becoming digital. We need to prepare ourselves. We are in the middle of transformation as, as, as Aramex and, and, and as a group of, of companies all across the world. Uh, we believe in, um, in, in data, in data analytics, and we're designing and, and gear and, and, and preparing our operations 
to, uh, to achieve all these uh, milestones across across our operations. Yeah. Uh, Mohammed Al Abbar, you're speaking of investing in uh, in e-commerce. Uh, Mohammed Al Abbar bought a stake in, in Aramex uh, just just very recently. How are you are you looking to capitalize on that connection to create something uh, bigger, perhaps in this space? What do you plan specifically? Look, we are we are in the business of last mile. Uh, uh, Mr. Al Abbar is a visionary. I mean, he went. Uh, one or a couple of steps ahead, and, and he did. He's, he's launching Noon. Uh, we look to serve Noon as we serve uh, other operations as well. Okay, so uh, then in terms of timeline, in terms of scale, in terms of scope, uh, any, any particular details that you could share with us to give us an idea of how this might affect your balance sheet in 2017 and going forward? Nothing, nothing yet as, of, as, of, as of that yet, but when the business comes, we're ready to serve. Well, tell me something here as well, uh, Hussein. You know, the thing is, uh, of course, you have this Anun business, don't you, Alabar? Do you expect this connection that you now have uh, uh, to allow you to play a bigger role there? I mean, look, we are um, uh, we welcome Noon. Uh, I think it's it's a great startup, which is uh, which is heavily funded and have a nice business model that will come and 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 uh, and compete within the market. Uh, the, look, the space is um, uh, um, is underplayed. Uh, I expect more more startups to come in this space. You see a lot of family businesses coming to the online. Uh, uh, mode. Uh, I think omni-channel is the future. You'll have offline and online. Look, if you look at mobile penetration across the region, if you look at online retail, online retail is, is below 7%. Uh, uh, globally and in this region probably below six percent so I, I guess you will see a, a more a more traction in this in this space and companies like us is designed and ready to serve the surge of online the internet penetration the payment gateway the ability to go and compare prices and shop across across the globe either across border or domestic is something that we capitalize and we're building a business model to uh, to operate it. Tell me something here, Hussein. You know, every story has some sort of connection these days with, with Donald Trump. How does it play out in your part of the world? And you know, what are your chief concerns, especially living in the Middle East? Look, as, as a logistician, um, um, I always call, and we always call to open borders. Uh, so we believe in, in, in non-tariff, uh, uh, smooth uh, flow of, uh, of, uh, of people and goods. I'm not going to comment on, on, on Donald Trump as such, but I mean, I'm from the region. Uh, uh, we're proud of, of who we are. Uh, we continue to do business as, as, as we go. Uh, we're going to watch and see our business model is resilient, is, is, an, asset, uh, is an asset light model. Uh, that allow us to adjust to uncertainties and, and we're, uh, we're watching as everyone else. Well, that's just it, Hussein, isn't it? We don't know what's going to happen next. And, you know, I just get, I want to get a sense of, how, you know, how much of your business has actually got anything to do with the U.S.? And uh, my second part of the question would be, how do you make contingencies for any kind of unpredictability, which is, I guess, a, a, a known unknown? Look, uh, we come from a region of unknowns. I mean, Aramex has, uh, has, has, has been founded in an area of, certain, of uncertainty. So uh, uh, addressing these challenges is, is part of our DNA. We're quite of natural in, in, in that sense. That, that's how it is. Uh, the U.S. is a major gateway. I mean, it's a, it's a gateway for our online commerce. So we, have, we operate four, four major hubways uh, out of the main cities. We serve the globe out of those. It's definitely a very important market for us that we keep investing in, in our hubs. Say we mentioned the uh, strength of the U.S. dollar at the top of the show. It continues to be a theme that at the moment is going along with the Donald Trump conversation. How is this stronger dollar going to possibly derail your expectations for 2017? I mean, it weighs heavily on your shoulders, doesn't it? Look, currency has been a concern for us. I mean, most of our operations in, in growth markets, we've been, we've been hit uh, in, 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 in South African rand, in Australian currency, in the, in the pound as, uh, as, uh, as it is. But it's, it's, it's part of business as we go. Uh, you know, we've, we're compensating that through growth of business in, in, in other markets, and, and we're resilient. Okay, as you pull out the map of 2017, and if I'd ask you to highlight the, the region or the countries that you are most excited about in terms of upside potential, what would you point to? Uh, Asia. I mean, we continue to invest here. We believe in the region. I think Asia has, has a big upside. If you look at Asia and compare it to U.S. and Europe, the online, talk about online, global online, $2 trillion. Asia has... 
probably around 900 billion, mobile commerce 500 billion. However, the penetration in Asia is below 47 percent compared to 74 percent between the U.S. And, and, and Europe. So the upside uh, of, of online commerce is something that we want to capitalize on. We're, we're gearing our, uh, our operation hubs, a lot of automation, a lot of last mile, a lot of investment in startups to build a sharing economy and ecosystem to address all these opportunities. Uh, it's a big challenge out there as well, but you know, how much uh, is political risk in the, in the GCC playing out of the bill? And also, you know, I want to get a sense of, you know, the impact from Saudi Arabia too as it uh, tries to go towards Vision 2030. Uh, uh, we're, uh, I think that's a great, it's a great vision being, being outlined. We're, we're excited about that. Uh, Saudi Arabia has, we've seen a good sign in Q4. We're optimistic about the consumer confidence in Saudi Arabia. It's, it's, it's the biggest market in the GCC. Uh, from the business that we operate, uh, we've seen a lot of optimism in the online. The Saudis are, are, are highly connected through mobile phone, through social media. They're buying online. And we've seen a lot of activities in that. We've, we're upgrading our operations in Saudi. Uh, we employ more than 2,000 people. We're opening more outlets. We're, we're, uh, we're gearing up our last mile. Uh, for the surge of cross-border e-commerce and the domestic e-commerce. Look, there is, it's quite interesting. In every local market, everyone wants to have an Amazon story. There is a lot of youth, a lot of talent, a lot of money available right now through angel investors and, and, and VCs. And, and we are part of that ecosystem. We're supporting that ecosystem. And, and we're gearing up our operations to deliver for these youth and their startups. You mentioned the number of people that you employ. And uh, we've spoken to some of the analysts. And some of the key concerns that they've pointed out are your wage costs. If you look at percentage of cost of sale, look about 25%. Uh, is that a concern for you, or I mean, what's, what, what are your thoughts for 2017 on? Look, we will see costs. probably a major improvement in 2018 forward. Um, if you look at India, for example, 73 percent of our last mile in India is crowdsourced, which means I don't pay salary, I pay per package. If you look at Saudi, 20 percent of the business in Q4 was outsourced. In Dubai, we're doing a couple of thousand shipments per day in terms of um, outsourcing. So we're, we're, we're moving our model, even our current staff are going through paper package. So what you're going to see, a major investments in technology, uh, you're going to see a variable cost on the last mile, an efficient yeah. cost, connecting between the consumer app and the courier app, allowing the consumer to have more visibility uh, and, and a better efficiency from our side. The, uh, you mentioned the investments that you're making, the last mile and so forth. Uh, what, what kind of uh, war chest are you, do you have at the moment? I mean, how much money do you have available to spend for these kinds of investments? Look, we have a strong balance sheet. Uh, cash on the side, probably around $150 million. Free cash, probably around $60, $70 million. Uh, we've got credit line available through, through a syndicate of banks. So we've got the firepower uh, if we see um, uh, you know, a big acquisition and um, available. So it depends. Um, we're committed. We're committed. We think there's, there are multiple opportunities. We're looking at Asia. We will probably next year we'll start looking at Latin America as well. We see a lot of opportunities in Brazil and Chile and Argentina. So we're expanding in, in all these markets. Uh, what about the uh, key concern in terms of lack of growth, right? So we talked a little bit about this part of the world that is uh, still struggling, uh, still coming off the back of a period of lower oil prices, which has really decelerated a lot of economic activity and a lot of the austerity measures that come along with that. W what other country or region are you concerned about in 2017 that could not deliver or is not likely to deliver at all in terms of your expectations? Look, we're, um, our, business model, our business model has changed, Joseph, dramatically. Freight forwarding, traditional supply chain used to be 55% of our revenue. If you look at our business right now, 75% is small package business. That business is growing globally. Whoever is in that business has no, has no challenge in terms of, of, of getting the customer. The challenge is in having capacity at, at a cost-efficient uh, pace. So that's what we're busy building our last mile capacity to address all these opportunities as we go. What about the uh, regulatory framework in this part of the world? Again, you're based out of Dubai and you have these global ambitions and you're investing heavily uh, in different parts of the world. Being based out of Dubai, uh, are there any regulatory hurdles that you're facing or uh, are there any logistical challenges 
measures uh, that are putting a cap on the kind of growth that you're targeting over the next few years? Not at all. Dubai is a natural hub. I mean, look at this city. It's, it's designed for companies like us to thrive. We've, start, we've been listed here for the last nine years. We're uh, uh, quite excited to be here. Uh, Dubai is a gateway to, uh, to Africa, to sub-Saharan Africa. Dubai obviously supports the whole GCC. Dubai connects Asia. So if you look at the geographic location of Dubai, you've got a couple of billion dollars around. You've got a great air, a couple of airlines around the region. You've got Emirates here. You've got Deep World. You've got the, high, the, the infrastructure that, that allows you to thrive and succeed. So I don't have an issue with that. However, we always call to, to a better, uh, 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 better cross-border. And I yeah. think the region, and we've been calling for that and, and I use your platform to again to call for for uh, better accessibility across all markets to, to bring down the, the, the non-tariff uh, issues uh, that hinders, hinders growth. Let's look to your long-term vision here as well, Hussein. But you know, Dubai, and you look at what Emirates does in, in their space. What about Aramax in your space? Can you be the, uh, the kind of halfway point, the, uh, the link between, let's say, the Far East China and where we are to Africa? I mean, you returned to Nigeria uh, at the beginning of last month. I mean, these are the markets that keeps exciting us. I think there is a lot between Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa and, and the region. We're connecting all these markets. I, we connect Africa to its neighbors. We're in Nigeria. From Nigeria, we can, we can connect the region. We're in Kenya. From Kenya, we go up to uh, uh, Uganda and down to Tanzania, to Ethiopia. We've been in South Africa for some time and again uh, around the South African uh, uh, community. Uh, 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 and, and there's a lot of upside. Uh, but if you look at Africa by, by design, Africa is 53 countries, a billion people, a lot of youth, uh, uh, urbanization are happening, cities are popping up, highly connected uh, mobile connectivity, internet connectivity. A, a, a extremely positive uh, uh, nation, uh, communities, and, and we see a lot of upside on the online commerce. If, if, uh, if you just connect through the mobile phone in Nigeria and Kenya and South Africa and have a cross-border process within a couple of days, we're working on that as well through a partnership with Payment Gateways. I, I see a major upside in Sub-Sahara and connecting Sub-Sahara to China, Asia and to the region as well. It's been a fascinating conversation. Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, Hussein Hashem, of course, the CEO Thank you of Aramex.